into the earth. If you don't believe me, read Revelation chapter 12. And it'll tell you about Michael fighting against the devil and the devil's angels. And they have found no place for them at all in heaven anymore. Right in the book of Revelation chapter 12. So the angels that were cast out of heaven, which I explained in last week's class, has come from the seed of the devil as found in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. The seed of the devil, his family, and I will show you in the Quran somewhere during the day where the jinn is a man. I'm going to tell you, a man. I'm going to use the Arabic word, Rajalin, a man. But first we got to establish something, and that is the jinn, who has come down out of heaven and is on earth tormenting man in the form of a man many times. The Quran reads in the 114th chapter the message to human beings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it has six verses because this devil was destined to reside on earth for 6,000 years one of his numbers and his time is almost up and he knows it and he is panicking he's running wild he, find, he sees UFOs as he calls them we call them swooper he sees UFOs every day and he don't know what to do there's wars and rumors of wars and nations against nations and kingdom against kingdom and there's famine and there's earthquakes and there's pestilence and the man is confused he's looking for you to help him and you're confused <laughs> but because Allah is a Rahman a Rahim the light of Allah is here and we'll know the truth and it'll make us free. Listen what it tells us. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Begin all things with the illustrious name of Allah, the yield of the most merciful, which I explained earlier. Cool. Tell him this, Muhammad. This is the angelic being, extraterrestrials as you'd have them, speaking to the Prophet Muhammad, who was the comforter who came after Jesus, the Holy Spirit with him. And the Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel, salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. He spoke to Muhammad and said in an order tense, tell him this Muhammad, call. This is what man better do, call. A'udhu bi rabbil nas. Call. A'udhu bi rabbil nas. Tell him this Muhammad, A'udhu. That they better seek, A'udhu protection. Bi rabbil nas. By way of the sustainer of all human people. Because he created you. You better stop seeking refuge in the devil and his ways. In his computers and his economic strategies and his manipulations. You better stop worshipping the beast. Who the book of Revelation chapter 13. When Jesus' disciples were telling us that we better be careful of this Satan who's going to be a man. And he has a number and a number of the beast. Jesus tried to warn people and that's why they wanted to kill him because he was warning people of the devil on earth not the devil floating around the sky he told them that Caesar was the devil how did he tell them that Caesar was the devil because what is opposite the almighty but the devil and when he told them render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto the Lord what is the Lord what was he telling them Caesar was then? the devil but you today are living in a Roman Empire under Roman rule, under Roman laws, under Roman custom. You even call yourself Roman Catholic this time. You have roamed, all right? You have roamed off of the path of righteousness and are paving a way for all humanity to help. Because remember, you're a one soul of many spirits. You all must be raised to save your kind. The Almighty, out of His generosity and compassion, has merely requested 144,000 people if we can redeem 144,000 that is not a lot then you will be spared then you will re-enter the garden of paradise but if we can't redeem not even 144,000 which is right in the book of Revelation gowned in white living in the image of the lamb we can't do that then there's no need he said, tell them this, Muhammad, Awuru bi Rabbin Nas, that they seek protection or refuge in the sustainer of man. Of course, 
Muhammad says, men, who? And the Quran says, Malik in Nas. He is the Malik in Nas. He is the ruler. The real ruler of man is not the devil. Oh, man has given himself to the devil to be ruled. The devil calls himself the ruler of the heavens and the earth. But the real ruler of man is mentioned in the Quran when it says, Malik in Nas. Then he says, the ruler of man? How did he become the ruler of man? He is the creator of man or human being. Seek protection in the sustainer of all human beings. He is the ruler of human beings. Because he created human beings. Here he tells us in the third thousand year, we're going down from the beginning of the six thousand, from Noah to Abraham, Malik in Nas, to Moses, in Nas, to Jesus, Min Sharil Waswasil Khanat. Men from Sher, the wicked, evil, Waswas al Khanat, Whisperer Khanat, one of the names that Satan had in the beginning, Khanat. These people connived and whispered and schemed to kill the Messiah, Isa, Ebba Maryam, Jesus, the son of Mary. Notice the degree. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَالِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَاسِ On into Muhammad الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ Who is this whisperer? He is the one who whispers فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ Into the hearts of people. He gets into their chest. That's what happened. When people wanted to consume fire against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They got around a scheme and they called him a fraud. He's a fake prophet. Don't believe him. When they wanted to conspire against Jesus the Messiah, they whispered. They got little councils and circles of people and they whispered and called him a fraud. And this would continue on straight past Muhammad to Adam and straight past Muhammad to today. When people want to turn people away from the Ansar Allah community, they sit around and whisper about Imam Isa. <laughs> See, I heard this about him, I heard this about him, you hear this, I heard that. He said, they don't come to him and talk to him. Forget his works, what he's doing, forget the books, forget the children, forget the people he's raising. Forget the fact that the devil can out-dispute anybody but Ansar Allah doctrine. All they do is shake their head when you tell them about us. To raise anger in the hearts of people against their own saviors. That is their job. But you know what the scripture says about that? The scripture says, Blessed is he who is persecuted after righteous name's sake. <laughs> right? For his is the kingdom of heaven. So if they don't call you names and call you brainwashed and stupid, you better be careful. They're going to persecute you after righteous name's sake. They accept the standard Anglo-Saxon church. But the Baptist church and the Holy Name church, which is more black orientated, they say those are fanatics. They're some kind of a cult. But Billy Graham ain't no cult. Reverend Schrager could run up and down the stage with throwing the Bible up in his hand with no respect, sticking up under his arm, he ain't a cult. But a simple little Southern Baptist church, they gotta become some kind of cult. What fools these mortals be? So he whispers into the hearts of people. And who does he whisper from? He whispers from Minel Jinnati Wenneth. Min al jinnati wanaf, the Quran says, he whispers from them by way of the jinn and people. And the jinn, as I explained before, is the devil, old Satan, called the beast, mentioned in the Bible. He gets into the hearts of men and has these men doing his bidding. Has them whispering and causing dissension and even killing people in his name. There are people out there 
that would kill you for the devil and swear that they've done the right thing. That's how dangerous it is. But the most valuable thing that man has is the gift of a living spirit from the Almighty, which is what he is, whether he accepts it or not. The truth shall make you free. Tells you right in the scriptures. Says, Men lahu adhanun fal yasmai biha. As for him who has an adhanun, an ear, so let him hear by way of it. Or as you say, he who has an ear, let him hear. Why did Allah say that? Because he knew that there'd be people that are summun, bukmun, hummun, deaf, dumb, and blind. You can jump up and down, scream, tell them anything, and they still won't believe. You understand what you are? You are a living spirit. You got your spirit from the soul of Allah. He blew of his soul into man, and you became a living spirit. You have now regressed from being divine, which was a supreme being. Now let me get this straight. Man is the supreme being. The heavenly father is just supreme. A being is a thing. Now Jesus was a supreme being. So was Moses, Muhammad, and you. A being, a supreme being. But Allah Ta'ala is El Azim. Ain't no being added on there. The problem is, you don't know that there's a word in Arabic for being. And that word is ka'in, a being. Allah al-Azim means Allah is the supreme. It didn't say about al-Azim, ka'in, supreme being. You are a being that is supreme. Because you have the spirit of the Almighty in you. that made you a living spirit. And you have the flesh of the earth, shaped by the hands of the angel, that made you a being. A thing. The Quran says that man was created from thin, from dust, from, from mud, from clay. You drop from your divinity, from a supreme being, now you are just a human being, El Insan. And then you drop from a human being to a Rajalin, a man. And when you get on the other side of being a man, <laughs> You become an animal again. But the funny thing about the word animal is that the word animal is the same word for life again. Very strange. Hayawan means animal. And Haya means life. When you get on the other side of being a supreme being, the last stage you get back to is an animal. And that's what the supreme beings have dropped themselves down to animals. You've got to work your way back up to your divinity in order for you to be worthy of heaven, in order for you to sit in paradise amongst the angels again. You must earn this, and so come through discipline and prayer. And the ultimate, which is so difficult for us, is loving one another. My name is Dr. Dennis Terry. I've been following the land for four years. I was a devoted Christian who thought he had the truth until I met the man of this time. Dr. Malachi Z. York has come to right the wrong. No more spook belief. No more blind faith. He has the facts. Bring on your imam. Bring on your priests. Bring on your sheikhs and rabbis. Dr. Malachi Z. York speaks all of their Semitic languages that most of them don't even know. He has allowed burnt men and women, scholars and their followers to question him. And there wasn't a question he couldn't answer. So now that he's asking the questions, they all fall to the truth. You can't box with God. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the most profound teacher in this day and time, Dr. Malachi Z. York. Dr. Yeah, so all the things happening today, why is it that Nubians aren't responding and not realizing that the end of the world is near? With all the doctrine that's coming out, and all the different things that you're doing little by little, you know, you have an effect on the people in a big way. And, then, and you just have to be ready for it. Unfortunately, a lot of new beings are not into computers like we are. And um, so they don't even know about the hell about. They don't even know, they don't know about the hell about comics. Right? A lot of you don't know about the hell about comics yet. 
That's why I got, what I did is I got a copy of the tape so you can hear the Amorites tell them about a craft like, like, like entities that have, seems like it's alive yet not alive that's four times the size of Earth that they just discovered and NASA is confirming that it's there next to a meteorite that came into this two years ago called Heba. And it's on the tape near called Heba. And they're actually talking about this this new craft thing and they tell you it's coming towards Earth and it's intelligently controlled and it's coming to get a group of people. And they say on the tape that these group of people that they're coming to get are people that are involved in, in an advanced study. And, 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 no, they literally say on the tape, they say they're out to teach people. Did anybody hear it yet? Oh, you all right, you picked it up, right? Dropping the car on the way back home. <laughs> and listen to it. In the end of it, the guy says, uh, in the beginning of it, in fact, it says, um, uh, I'd like to thank, um, Dr. So-and-so, something Malachi. That's not me now, right? It's somebody who uses the name Malachi. Most of them don't pronounce the name Malachi, they pronounce the name Malachi. Right? So it's a slip of tongue. When they say Malachi, that means they, they're letting us know where the source is, but they cannot deny. And we have the, we went into the computer and um, internet and it showed us the comet. They had pictures of the comet in there and um, it's good to know it's there. They noticed, they noticed the Nibiru and they literally say on the tape, uh, Zachariah Sitchin refers to this as Nibiru. Next um, came into us was, um, I tried to fact it as many people as I can, I don't know if you got the skull. Right? Y'all get a skull? The skull of a denacle, with twice the chromium pressure size. And right after that, about two days later, they sent us the skull of a tarot, a cone. Because everybody, when we said the cone is a real, people thought you're chopping off Saturday Night Live. Of course, they don't know that everything the Amorites are here. He puts the intelligence in front of you so he won't believe it. But they got the actual skull. And we're getting more information coming constantly because now that people know through the internet that we're the source of this information, they feel free sending us stuff. Amorites, everybody, I'm just clipping. I got like 10 stories on how Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene. You hear somebody had dogs with that one? Had children. I was kids still moved, you know, was protected by the, you know, whom. Etc. All these stories are coming out. They had a whole thing on television the other night on um, Discovery of London where they talk about, you know, the, you know, the um, graves of, of skulls, the graves of skulls under Old Jerusalem. Well, they have a place called the Grave of Skulls under Old Jerusalem for those who don't know where they have all the skeletons of all the uh, popes and all of that. And this is that, that place where they say that um, Freemasons go when they reach a certain degree, believe me, I know. And they go to Jerusalem and they go beneath old Jerusalem and they see the body of Jesus. And uh, they've taken the body of Muhammad out of the 18th century out of Medina. That's when they rebuilt Medina. The mosque in the north, and they, when they did that there, what actually happened is the Shriners took the body of Muhammad out of that, which they had preserved, and his body is also in the, under there, and, and only uh, people of a certain degree of Freemasonry are allowed to see it as a confirmation. Actually, they're not looking at Jesus' body, they're looking at Bar Jesus' body, because in there also, in a, in a higher degree, they tell you that Jesus went to Egypt, and he died there at 120, but Jesus' son, why he was the one that was killed in the streets of Jerusalem, body transferred to the Vatican in Rome, where they simulated the crucifixion of him there, kept his body there for a certain amount of years, and then the Knights of Templar went there and got it and bought it and put it in there. They have a special chamber where they keep things sacred. They also, I don't know if some of y'all remember yesterday, I said, under the Sphinx, there's some documents, here's what I told you about that. They're trying to get up under the Sphinx to get to these documents. They found out the Sphinx is a symbol, was a symbol of, you know, in the astrological charts of the ancient Egyptians, you know, as the, uh, the era of Leo, the lion. That's what it's supposed to symbolize, and that's something to do with the Mars project and the, what they refer to as the Adama project. This is that one Adam, right? And so they are unmasking, because we should never say they discovered anything. They don't discover. They uncover things that we bury, right? So a new word, just a new one for you. Right? <laughs> they don't discover anything. But anyway, they're starting to uncover a lot of the things that's going to confirm everything that you have put trust in me in is going to become confirmed for you in front of your own eyes. And not that you need it. I know some of y'all who follow me here that day. And I do that. Right? But I'm just saying, it is good for those who come to your class with the skeptic. And I didn't say skeptic. I said skeptic. They come skipping around <laughs> looking for some type of 
evidence to what appears to be a science fiction movie when you start kicking the doctrine on them. I know deep in your heart, as much as you may have loved me and I you, when you had to go out and teach what I was teaching you, it was difficult. You say, no, the guy is really from another planet. And he has 19 spirits talking to him. And, and you know, never mind, we'll pick this up later. Let's talk, about, let's talk about something that appears more sensible. But the confirmation of who and what I am is confirming itself. And that's the best I can ask for from my brother, the honor star, because they didn't get the little help. Because to come here, you know, to incarnate into this individual's body and try to convey this message to people that have been so television, so subliminally sedated, I mean, that they removed the essence of the nine from you and implanted the six, the lower side of the circle. It's such a hard job just to get you to not listen to the wrong music. You think you're saying something cool when you say, I like um, such and such a music. You don't understand nothing about music. Because y'all are familiar with the 800 megahertz frequencies that are coming from the air now. You're familiar with that. You do? You do? No, you're not. Okay, well, I thought I talked about it. But you know, each one of the human beings have in their brain they're called magnetic particles. That's the best term that they can come up with them. One day, of course, I'll give you the real name, but let's let them play with it for a while. Magnetic particles. You have nine magnetic particles in your brain. All right? These magnetic particles can be affected by wavelength, by frequency, higher and lower. Now, the cellular phones are all set at 800 megahertz. And that brain of yours was 900 megahertz. You follow that? And it drops down. And all of the time, I was speaking about the brain capacity of an Amorite being less than that of a Nubian. They were talking about that frequency response, your ability to respond to sound. All right? Of course, as you know, microwave also is moving on a sound. I, I can explain that a couple of years ago, how microwave cooks food by sound, which means that they're able to cue in and deaden some of those magnetic particles. A lot of Nubians, instead of walking around in nine ether, and the nine ether is beyond their head, too much in the nine ether state of activated nine magnetic particles, they have dropped down to four, three, two, and when you see a brother who's totally delirious, unable to coagulate words, he is about down to one, and some just go vegetate out. And what they have to do is they give you all types of drugs so that it drops your body down to what's referred to as an alpha wavelength, which is one step from dead. And that way you'll stay, they refer to as monotone. Monotheos, monotone. Mono, they keep you dead, right? And so they are now capable of sending these frequencies out. They are putting these stations along the road. I know as y'all cross the country, if you look up, you see this thing on a tall pole and it's shaped like a tetrahedron, and it has little things on all four, three sides. Just look for them, and, and you'll see them. Well, right now the government has 24 different satellites aligned to the planet around the planet. All right? And he has 24,000 of these receivers and senders situated across the country. He is able to tune in to your radio via frequency. It's called frequency response. This unit that I picked up, that I, that I brought here and clicked on is a unit that's making it possible for everybody on Kadesh to turn to a certain station on the radio and they can hear me talking without any wires. Which means I'm sending control frequencies through the air. You follow that? Once I understand, once I understand the human, and that his brain waves are between 900 and 700. You follow? Seven and a half ounce of brain on that? 900 and 700 on megahertz. I can send out certain types of frequencies. I can also lock these frequencies into music. Because when they started doing this, they did it in a place called uh, Wacken Hut, naval base. You should investigate and find out before they start that. And the reason why they refer to it as the Harp project, if you heard of that, out of Alaska, is because a harp, of course, is an instrument. 
and they know that by strumming a harp, you can get different response. Years ago, a lot of people used to come to me and ask me, how do they line their body up? And I would tell them, what they had to do is go to a keyboard and um, take middle C and find the two eighths of octaves. Find the octave between middle C from one to the next. Of course, you know, it's eight notes. And I said, you go up and down the keyboard until you find that note that soothes your body. And then you'll know what key you're vibrating on. You know what vibration works with your body. The uh, Buddha or the Tibetans, they know about this. And so they have learned how to make their throat make three sounds simultaneously. And they chant like that. Constantly. And they got this going on right now while we're sitting here. Meanwhile, the practitioners of the faith start off and they're on another frequency while the priests are pulling. The sound is a strange thing. If Deke is making a certain sound and I do another sound, a half step up or a whole step up and I do a, a let's say he does a one and I do a three and he does a five, we create what's called harmony. You follow that? As you know, none of the groups are singing in harmony no more. They have this new kind of harmony called unitary in harmony. They think they're singing in harmony because two or three of them are singing the same note and it's partially unison, unison in part harmony and none of the kids have it no more because they had to stop that because that vibrates three bones up here in the sinus that connect to the tetrahedron that the nose creates which opens the eye of the sphere, the third eye. They know what frequencies we move on. They know our emotional state. Now, they clip them on and off at different times. For instance, Sunday morning, they have it on a very low frequency and people feel it's Sunday. Even when they're not Christian. They have it where, well, it's Sunday, it's kind of calm. When it comes to about 8 o'clock Sunday, they start to speed up. The, the, the oscillation, right, and I'm going to get the oscillators in a minute, speed up the oscillation valve inside the frequency to get the response and get higher pitch and people become more hyper. And Sunday people start speeding faster because they're trying to get them prepared for months. What has happened is they know that our body moves on a different frequency, respond differently than theirs does. Obviously, because most Caucasian singers sing in high natural voices. Most Nubian singers sing in low voices. Or they were forced to emulate the Amorite and use what is referred to as a fall, settle, or a placement. But not a natural high voice. Very few Nubian singers have a natural high voice. Unless they go out their way to, like Seal or a couple of others who want to be Amorites, go out their way to sound like Amorites. They're already programmed. They've already got inside his head when he had that accident and alter the frequency. They can also alter your frequency response. Let me tell you what I mean by that so you can a better understand. Um, years ago I tried to teach this, but people wasn't as ready then as they are now. Simple, not uncomplicated. It's the period of time that music took a change. From the time you came in from Africa, when everything was based on drums and chants, right? And you had a kalimba, you follow that? And you had a marimba, and then as it moved into the Latino world, and you had a kunda, and et cetera, et cetera. You know the instruments I'm talking about that apply to us. As a people. All right. Now, eventually, our music went into blues. Of course, blues was a result of the fact that the Amorite gave us the blues. He took everything from us, beat us up, robbed us, raped us, castrated us, and we became quite depressed. As a result, our music, which is our emotions, became depressed. In due time, that blues changed into rock and roll for people who had cars, <laughs> and R&B for those who didn't. The reason why they called it rock and roll is because little Caucasian kids with combs in their back pocket and grease in their hair and bucks on used to drive around with their car radios on and rock while they rolled. Most Nubians couldn't afford a car, 
So I was based on rhythm and blues. All we were done standing one place dancing. And the blues was mixed in depression, now with rhythm, and we called it up tempo. Beat up the tempo a little bit. And there we got rhythm and blues. All right, I'm like, of course, want to do rhythm and blues the same way a lot of Negroes want to try to do heavy metal and rock. It won't work. Hootie and the Blow Bitch, it won't work long. He was just put out there to destroy the fact that they had no Caucasian to come up with any good hits this year, and they needed a Negro who's a Caucasian to take all the awards. That's all. All right, so as that happened, he started squeezing us, namely the men, to get us to start singing in high voices, come commence around the 60s. And that produced the Delphonics, Blue Magic, Stylistic, Black Ivory, Shy Lights, and then some more. Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, Temptations had, but they had a uh, Mel Gorn. A lot of the hit records were based on um, Ali is his real name. Eddie Kendrick was his um, other name, right? And he was a false setup. This was done intentionally to get us to love high pitch sounds. You follow? Because that's the only way we can get a hit record is to sing the way they want. And so Blue Magic and everybody, we all screaming our voices out trying to sound like white people with white men singing naturally in a high voice, you know, which is self-explanatory, right? 